How I discovered my husband's affair and rebuilt my life after heartbreak. My husband, 40M and I, 34F, have been married for four years. I came into my stepdaughter's 16F life when she was 10. Both her and my stepson, now 12M, were somewhat neglected and had behavior issues when I met them. My husband and his ex aren't bad parents, but he travels a lot for work, and she is a bit flighty and self-indulgent. My SD and I hit it off real well and I love both my stepkids. We all co-parented well, with me taking on a more active role in their school and other stuff. Both husband and his ex-wife were satisfied with me doing the grunt work for kids. They both travel a lot and I became the sole parent who was fully engaged. I own a three-bedroom house I had inherited from my parents, and husband and kids moved in to live with me. Kids love their rooms and our home and their lives in our town. The custody arrangement they have on paper is 50 to 50, but their mom doesn't have as much space as I do, so the kids are here almost full time. A few months ago, I came back from an overnight school field trip with my stepson to a very distraught SD. She found her parents together in my bedroom and was upset about the cheating. I was devastated to hear this from her. After some sleuthing I found out that their affair had been going on for months and possibly a whole year. I've been trying to get pregnant for the past two years, and we were having very frequent sex, and realizing that my husband was sleeping with us back to back, was especially nauseating for me, I have filed for divorce and asked him to leave. He doesn't want this marriage to end and seems somehow convinced that I'll change my mind. But he agreed to a separation, and has moved out to an apartment. My SD was mad at both her parents and wants to continue living with me. Neither of them are taking any steps to move out the kids who are still living in their rooms and living their lives as if this family hasn't imploded. I'd have been happy with having the kids with me. But my problem is that both my husband and kids' mom feel at liberty to come into my house whenever they feel like it because their kids are here. She feels no guilt about the cheating and acts as if I am the interloper. She treats me like I am their nanny expecting me to continue taking care of things for kids and leaving me with instructions and criticisms. Meanwhile, my ex frequently drops by under the guise of seeing the kids, but keeps trying to cajole me into letting him move back. I love my SD and I don't want to do anything to hurt her further, but I can't take living like this. The amount of hurt and anger I feel towards my husband and his ex-wife is too much and it's painful to have to keep dealing with them. The absolute cheek of them to treat me like this is making my head explode. But I don't know what to do about the kids. Everyone in my life is expecting me to suck it up and do what's best for the kids. I love them but this is becoming unbearable. Comments. Thema girl. And yay, but you can have CPS and get those ungrateful parents straight about what they want. Chances are it would be hard to keep your SD with you, but at least she would get a better family than these AHs. Op replies. I could call CPS, this is abandonment I think, but I am scared of how this will affect the kids. I could straight up talk to SD and ask her to move out and she probably will, but it will break her heart. SS is closer to his mom, so he might deal better with it. SD is so attached to me, I was there for so many important firsts in her life. I am scared to lose her but I also can't deal with her parents in my house. Princess Banana. Woff, this is hard. Firstly, change the locks. You have two options. Tell the kids you need some space or you could also go to court and fight for custody. Op replies. My lawyer said I can't block my husband from my home because the divorce is not finalized and he still has residency here even though the house is in my name. I had talked to my stepkids about not letting their mom in and SD understood that, but SS gets upset and listens to his mom when she yells at him to let her in. I can't make the kids stand up to her like that. Update 16 days later. I tried submitting an update to Ada, and that didn't go through. I am posting the update here because I'd like some support and suggestions, and you have been so helpful in the last post. I read all the comments but things blew up in my face soon after and I was offline for a while. Following the advice given, I talked with different lawyers to see what I could do to in this situation. What I found out wasn't very promising and the lawyer retainer fee for a custody fight is too high. With the separation my money situation is pretty tight and I couldn't afford to chase this issue legally. I've been stressed and working late these days. The day after I made the post I was going to be late home and asked SD to reheat the frozen lasagna I had made for dinner. 
When I arrived home, it was to both the kids having a meal with the ex and their mom, I'll call her M. M had decided to turn it into a family dinner and set out the food I made, on my formal dining table, with my nice dishes. She had created a pretty family moment with her and ex under my roof. I completely lost it at that point. I regret to say I behaved abominably, screaming at her and my ex, and told them to get the hell out of my house. This happened in front of SS who was pretty shocked, so far I had kept him out of most of this mess. After my breakdown I needed some time away, so I drove out to spend the weekend with my cousin. SD wanted to come with me and we left SS, with his dad. SD was so sweet to me, and very understanding of why I was upset. She hadn't invited her parents, her mom had shown up, and then she invited X for dinner. SD hadn't anticipated that I'd get this upset. Frankly, I am surprised too that I blew up like that. That's not the typical me. After we got back I let him know that she shouldn't come over anymore, and if she did then I'll report her for trespassing. And didn't believe me and showed up to talk and I lost it at her, and this time I did call the cops. They nicely asked her to leave and she did. SS was very upset at me for this. M showed up again the next day acting all sweet and telling me that I am being unreasonable. Unfortunately, I became pretty unhinged at this and swore and yelled at her. SS shoved me and screamed at me to shut up. I fell on my butt and was shocked into silence. M was pretty surprised too and left immediately, whereas SS ran and locked himself in his room. He called his dad to come get him, but he was out of town and M ignored his calls. SS is a very loving kid, so his reaction was very heartbreaking. I understand where he is coming from though. M is his mother after all. M is also a very pretty person who comes across as very sweet and delicate. She's the type of woman people jump to help. It is natural that SS would feel protective of her. I hadn't expected that he'd turn on me though. The rest of the week was bad with SS angry at me and refusing to talk to me. When his dad got back in town he came and got him. SS told him he didn't want to live with me anymore. A few days later X wanted me to take back SS, but the kid didn't want to come back. I told X I will not force him, and X got pretty mad at me. He wanted me to fix the situation somehow. When I refused to make SS stay with me, X became pretty mean. He said a lot of ugly things, the worst being that he's relieved I didn't get pregnant because I'd make an awful mother. I was afraid of things turning out this way, but I've got X and M out of my house, and that is a relief. SD is going to live with me till she moves out to college. X is struggling to find childcare for SS, and is so angry at me that I think he'll not slow down the divorce anymore. I want to fix this with SS, but a big selfish part of me is afraid to do anything that'll bring his parents back in my life. I really don't understand M's actions and motivations in all this. She wanted to sleep with X and I have walked out of the picture, and it was all hers. If she wanted her kids, it wasn't like there was anything I could do about that. If she didn't want her kids, I was already taking care of them. But she keep violating my boundaries with a smile on her face and be all surprised that I am not happy about this. Right now neither her nor X want to be the daily parent to SS, but he is angry at me enough that he doesn't want to chose me. I feel so crushed about that. Comments. Burning Duchess. I am so sorry you're going through all of this. I do think it's for the best that SS is not staying with you anymore and I think I'd be healthy for you to take a step back from them as a family during the divorce proceedings. You've patented their children more than they have but unfortunately at the end of the day they are still theirs, so with SS being younger it's best you give them some room. I second the question of how old SD is. Also you should both think how her staying with you will affect her college options. Are her parents paying for it? Will they withdraw their support if she maintains your side over theirs? As much as you love her, you should also ensure that these children don't become your responsibility or that their parents could claim that you are alienating her from them during this process. Change the locks at your place for sure though, and if SD is to be staying with you please, make sure she understands that they are not welcome. I'd recommend that if she wants to see them it should be at a neutral place if she's not up to going to theirs, but if she's too young for that then maybe she should be going to her father's, even if it's not what she would prefer. You have to put yourself as your priority right now, and stop letting them control and manipulate the situation. Everyone is going to get a little hurt, 
and it will suck, but you will get through this. Phantom's Manor. I think the best thing you can do is to let SD talk to SS, get some time for yourself, and maybe put the kids in counseling. Being how young he is, he might not realize how messed up the situation is. On top of his parents' divorce, he and his sister were neglected by both of them and is now going through another divorce. And the fact that they had the audacity to have a family dinner and using your possessions kind of feels like they're sucking up to both SD and SS into the life they had before. Only they don't want to do the work. They want to use you as their babysitter. If it weren't for this, I would have thought they're trying to ruin his perception of you because in his point of view, you initiated the divorce because his parents want to get back together. You yelled at them and generally being a bad person to his mom in his eyes. Just to be clear, you aren't a bad person at all and have the right to be mad and both of them. Certainly better than the both of them. OP, I keep thinking about the dinner and I am so weirded out. Nobody is poor here. Doing a family dinner isn't a hardship for anyone. Do this in your own home or go to a restaurant. Do anything, but why do it in my home? That just blows my mind. What are these guys thinking? SD is being great with me, but she's emotionally shut herself off from her family. She only calls her dad for money and she doesn't talk to her mom at all, which isn't healthy either, but I don't know what to do about that now. She's ambitious and working hard for school and I am proud of her for that. My parents passed away a decade ago, but my aunt is nearby and ex complained to her about me. I got lectured by her about how I should do better by my stepkids. I hate that he's bad-mouthing me to the few people in my life. Update 17 days later. Nothing of consequence has happened on the legal front since my last post. Emotionally, it has been a lot of ups and downs. A lot of people messaged me suggesting that I should let SD go, and it's not healthy to have her staying with me. That may be so on paper, but it's not something I want to do. I met X a few years after my parents' death. I was very close to them, and they passed away one after the other. I suffered from a lot of depression from grieving. My boyfriend at that time dumped me and I lost a lot of friends. When we started dating, I was coming out of my sadness, but was still very lonely. SD and I became each other's supports very quickly. She felt neglected by her parents and had resentment towards them, and I suppose she loved the attention I gave her. I found her to be a loving kid and I liked bonding with her. SS and I were close too while he loved his mom I did kinda assume that he was closer to me. One of the resentments that SD held against her parents was that they were uninterested and dismissive of her extracurriculars that led to her failing in some activities she was very passionate about. She's into a sport I was familiar with and I spent a lot of time training with her and taking her to her events and classes. She is very good at it now and it's going to be a source of scholarships for her and possibly get her into the college she is interested in. She is hardworking and ambitious and I want to support her as much as I can. She has promised to keep her parents out of our home and I hope she sticks with that till she leaves for college. X has been very angry and ranting at me in messages. I've stopped answering his calls and I don't reply to his emails. I've told him the only subject I'll discuss with him is divorce and only through my lawyer. So he's been bad-mouthing me to a lot of our mutual acquaintances. A couple of people have gently chided me for abandoning SS. One went so far as to say that women who become stepmoms should know what they are signing up for and a real mother wouldn't leave her children. I am not good with conflict and haven't been able to respond properly. I've pretty much isolated myself from people so I don't have to listen to comments like these. M is still blocked by me and she hasn't made any more efforts to communicate with me and that is a huge relief. A week after the last post, SIL came down to see me. She lives three hours away, so I was pretty apprehensive that she was going to drive down all the way over here to talk to me, I asked to meet in a restaurant and she agreed. I was also worried about talking to her because while she's been polite and nice with me, she was and still is M's friend. She told me X had urged her to talk to me about SS, and she completely disagrees with him about that. She said I've been a great stepmom to SS, but he's not my responsibility. X was honest with her about his affair and she supports me getting divorced. She said a lot of supportive things to me about moving on and looking after myself, and also thanked me for taking care of SD still. That was nice but then she went on to add that she wasn't surprised by the affair at all, she was surprised that X married me. She was like you should have seen this coming. 
Though she didn't come out and say it, the insinuation was that M is so much better than me, she's prettier, more successful, more charming and X would jump on the chance to be with her. That was just great to hear, Peaky. Though it's easy for me to accept now that I am not the smart one here, because I didn't see it coming at all. I was happy and in love with my family. The upside to that meeting is that X has stopped harassing me, I haven't heard anything from him since and I think he has stopped talking about me to others too. I don't have anything on SS yet, though SD told me he's alright and waiting for summer vacation to start. A few of you said that M might have been interested in taking my house. I don't think so. She does alright by herself and has a good career. She has a rather spendy lifestyle and lives in a very fancy two-bedroom apartment in the city, while my house is in a child-friendly but staid suburb. I hope things continue to be quiet because I need to get my head straight and focus on work or I may get fired. And my job is the one thing going for me right now. Comments. No Tangerine 3320. Op, don't let SIL's insinuations get to you. Your ex and M got back together because shitty people will always gravitate towards others like them. Still doesn't mean they'll be happy. They'll run themselves around the same cycle they did previously which is, get together, think they're in love, break up, get back together, all while the relationship is devoid of any true love or compassion for one another. I'm honestly happy to hear that you really love and care for SD. In this situation, you seem to be the only source of love and good parenting this child needs. SS might come around eventually but don't force anything. He'll come to you when he's ready. I hope you can move on from this and find happiness. Don't let anyone step on you or take advantage of you. You deserve people in your life who can reciprocate the same amount of love you give. OOP, thank you. I keep tittering between anger and fear about my situation. When things go quiet it's mostly anger now. But time with SD is good. She and SS were the best things about my marriage. Update 12 days later. We had a court date and the judge ordered mediation and put this off for a few more months. I was hoping this would be a wrap up. After all we don't have kids together and I want nothing from X. I didn't bring up custody for SD or SS, and he didn't either. All I want is a divorce and to walk away with what I brought in my house and my car. X isn't fighting for those but he's still saying he doesn't want a divorce. Dubh man. He's left me two messages asking to talk. I've ignored him. The mediation will be over Zoom, which to me sounds more comfortable than in-person meeting. SD and I are doing well living together. M is silent. Update seven weeks later. I am divorced. Papers are signed, judge has signed off, it's done. I am so relieved. I was scared that this would drag on for longer. The first mediation meeting was a shit show with X trying to talk at me that we should go through marriage counseling. The mediator was a very firm woman who kept the conversations in control though. We had a couple more mediation emails, and he agreed to sign off. I was still nervous about how it'd go today, but X played nice and signed off on everything. A very nice surprise was that he voluntarily gave me our entire joint savings account. I was not expecting that. I had asked for half of it, though in reality he has put more in it than I did. I'd have been okay with taking just my portion, but he surprised me by giving me all the money. It was our emergency savings, so not a rich amount but a nice high five figure number. I am so relieved about it. Money had become tight with lawyer fees and changes and this helps. Emotionally also, it made me feel better about myself. I may be wrong, but my heart wants to read this as his acknowledging that he screwed me over and I deserve something back. Comments. Majestic Post 1684. Woohoo time to celebrate your new freedom. Best wishes to your future. OOP, thank you. I'm both relieved and scared of being lonely. The period of my life where I was alone after losing my parents was very depressing, and I don't want to fall back into that. Majestic Post 1684. Staying busy and building a community of friends around me really helped me after my divorce was finalized. I go on dates with friends, volunteer and I also join a cooking group. We get together to share dishes once a month. I'm sorry you lost your parents so young, but this time around you have your SD. You also have us. A group of internet strangers who support and are rooting for you. Edit. I fixed SS to SD sorry I just noticed. OP. Thank you. This is my plan too. I've joined an adult league for the sport SD and I play. I've signed up for group cycling. I might try some volunteering.
I am very grateful to the support I found here. Every time I've felt overwhelmed or my resolve has weakened, I've pulled up and reread all the messages. Update three months later. Okay, not really an update, more like a vent. I can write things down here that I can't talk about in real life. I'm making a big show of being happy and social and carefree to people in real life, but honestly, I am so damn miserable and sad. The first couple months I soldiered on out of pure spite and determination to remake myself, but it's devolving into sadness. I'd been avoiding hearing anything about X or M, but SD has been having some issues and she vented to me how mad she's at her parents, mom mostly. X and M didn't last long, they were having fights and issues well before my divorce finalized. M immediately started dating someone else and from what I hear she's happy in this current relationship and is so into it, she hasn't even met either of her kids in the past two months. Only video calls. X had to juggle a lot of things to adjust his work schedule and get dependable child care for stepson. He's dating two now, a much younger woman. X and M used to co-parent well, but I guess I was the one really doing that because right now they hate each other and hardly ever talk. One would think that it'd make me happy, seeing them fall apart from each other, but it's only making me more angry. My life was ruined, the kids' happy home was destroyed, and for what? I miss my old life so much. A lot of it was a lie, but I was so happy and full of purpose then. I'm just feeling lost right now. I've tried dating and have been on a lot of dates, but they have all been bad or wrong. People around me, have been setting me up with divorced dads, and no offense to them, but I can't do that again. I actually had one date which felt more like an interview for a nanny role. It made me so depressed. SD is doing great though, and that brings me a lot of joy. I'm a little scared of the time soon, when she'll move out and it'll be just me in this big house. I've talked to SS on the phone a couple of times. That boy has grown up and changed so much it feels like we were separated for years. He's going to come for a sleepover during the Halloween weekend and I am pretty excited about that. SD was going to babysit him at X's place while he travels, but I okayed having him with us since it's Halloween. Comments. Corf is 74. Damn, I had hoped things would look up for you after the divorce went through. Your ex and his ex are supremely trash people, and the fact that they are just moving on from you and each other show you how utterly shallow they are, which also proves that you're now mourning the man you thought he was, not the man he actually was, I hope, after your grieving period is over, you'll meet a really nice non-shallow guy who is not just looking for a nanny. OP. Sorry for the late response. I was in a depressed state and avoiding things for a while, I am much better now. Thanks for your comment. Yeah I think I never really knew my ex. The side he showed me was pretty sweet though, I miss that. Update two years later. I don't know if anybody will see this update after all this time, but I had left this at a sad note a couple years ago, and that doesn't feel right. I'd stepped away from Reddit because I was getting quite a bit of negative messages. Some people making fun of me and calling me names. Most of you have been so amazing and helpful, but a few mean messages still got to me. My life has been good since then. I'd stopped dating and gave up on online apps. I did well with making a few friends and staying busy with having an active life, a good career and hobbies. Eventually, I met my current partner on a hiking trip. My daughter has been a constant ray of sunshine in my life, and we are very close. She introduces me to people as her adopted mama lol, and I don't refer to her as step. She is doing great at college, she's growing into an awesome person and my home is her home when she visits from school. Things are a bit more complicated with my former stepson. He has been upfront that he doesn't want me as a parental figure in his life, and is not interested in being close to me I respect that. I still stay in touch with him, but as a distant friend. We exchange jokes and sometimes we three get together for dinner. He is in therapy for depression and anger issues so I don't want to let go of him completely. Regarding the guy I am with now, this is by far the best romantic relationship of my life and I am very happy. I am pregnant now, second trimester, and we are both excited. The pregnancy was unexpected, but I am thrilled about it. I was trying so hard to get pregnant in my previous marriage, and all that trying in medical interventions didn't help, and now I am pregnant despite condoms. The relationship is still new and I am treading carefully. One of the best parts is that his family is amazing. 
His parents are very sweet and accepting people who already treat my daughter as their grandchild and are very excited about the baby. Comments. Silly Dizzy Dazzle. I am so happy for you op, and I know you had many rough years. Thankfully you have your daughter. You were brought into her life so that she always 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 has a parent that chooses her and her best interests first. I know you want this too for your son, and he will come around. Please continue to give him time while still showing you love him, and always will. With his therapist he can come to the mature decision that his bio-parents are selfish and self-absorbed. You have so much love, kindness, compassion, and empathy your little baby is going to be welcomed into a wonderful family with you as the best mom. You've been momming for years and are wonderful at it. Congrats on the new partner who knows how marvelous you are and treats you as an equal partner. This was a happy to read positive update. Thank you. Take care of yourself. Enjoy all the happiness and making more positive memories shared with your loved ones. Very happy for you all. OP, I am so happy these days, but also nervous about the pregnancy and a smidge scared of losing again. Then I also think that things didn't go how I had planned them, but they worked out all right. I remember being scared of becoming a stepmom, but those kids turned out to be the best thing, and they made me mom for life. I worry about my son, he is so cynical and unhappy for someone so young. Whether I am in his life or not, I want him to find his peace and be happy.